Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay because it is um, super breezy out here today. Um, so if you can't hear me, let me know and then I'll um, just start again elsewhere. Um, so I'm going to start this with a quick little plug that this weekend I'm teaching two workshops, but this isn't a shameless plug. It's just to explain um, what I'm going to talk about because a lot of people asked me about this. So on Saturday, this coming Saturday, I am um, channeling uh, Gaia, Mother Mary, and Mary Magdalene as like a divine trio. Um, hey, you guys, let me know if you can't hear me at all, okay? Because I have no idea. <laughs> Anyway, so this Saturday I'm channeling Gaia, Mary, and Mary as a divine trio, which is like, I'm not going to get into how that came out. That was a whole like crazy wild thing that they started coming to me, but they want to talk about how to, how the rise of the divine feminine is going to work, what it means, because it's not like, oh, now women are in charge, men step back. It's all about like everything becoming equal and balanced and cohesive so that humanity can come together as a, um, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Fiorella. Uh, so humanity can come together as one collective. So, um, so I'm doing that on Saturday, directly channeling. The three of them will come into my body and take over my body, the words coming out of my mouth will be their words, sometimes them together, sometimes individuals. So that'll be interesting. But then on Sunday, I'm doing like an all day workshop. Saturday is like, I think it's one to three at Rising Phoenix in Manassas. Um, it'll be awesome. Sunday, I'm doing an all day workshop of past life regressions. And um, we're starting with like in the morning part, we're doing the traditional past life regressions. And then in the afternoon, we're going into the Akashic Library. And then we're going to go, the first thing we'll do is past life regression, but then we're going to explore the library and some of the other things that you can do there to connect with your guides, your helpers, your whoever it is you can connect with. Um, but in a way, that also is a channeling process for me because, um, but it's channeling a space, channeling a, um, a venue. So it's not like when, when I do past life regressions, like there are two ways you can do it. There's the formula where um, it's pretty much always the same, even if the, the words change. You start with um, taking people into a meditative state and take them into a place that's energetically connected to where they can be at the moment. But you go through a series of, of vignettes where you are guiding them, getting their, their personal frequency and energy higher and higher and higher, uh, more light and airy. Or if you're doing past life regression for like uh, earth you know, like uh, discovering their connections with earth gods or things like that, you get it deeper and deeper and deeper, more resonant. But um, you spend every part of the guided meditation, which can take up to an hour of guided journey to get people there. It usually takes me at least 45 minutes to get people to the, life, to the past life area where uh, you utilize all the senses. You're like, Start, you're in a garden, go through the smell, the feeling of the sun on your skin, the clouds, the breeze, the smell of the flowers, a gentle fluttering of a breeze through the leaves. There's bunny rabbits there, deer over there. You look at the flowers. It's, you know, very utilizing all the senses. And as you go on the journey, it goes from like a beautifully cultured garden to a field, uh, you know, a meadow of wildflowers into the woods and the path gets more and more um, natural uh, and you go down cliffs or up cliffs, you know, and you go to a river or a lake and, you know, it's um, a whole journey. Um, 
in which people are getting less out of the structured and more into the wild. You utilize all senses every stage of the journey, um, but they're releasing control and they're using more awareness because when you're on a path in a garden, you can look at the garden and not pay attention, but when you're on a trail in the woods and there's roots and stones and owls hooting and this and that, you have to be very aware of what's going on and release your inner control so you can become one with the environment. So when I do that kind of journey, um, I need to, especially if it's in a group past life regression, I like um, get everyone into the same energetic uh, resonance so that we're all on the same platform. That kind of creates an energetic network that supports everyone to be together. Um, and this is part of why when you do this on your own, it's easier to do it on a guided meditation like audio than, um, you know, like doing it out of your own head because you, you want some support and network so that you can just relax on it as opposed to creating it and, and managing it. Um, so I create that network for, you know, 10, 20 people, more sometimes. And then um, when everyone is relaxed and cohesive, energetically, I bring everyone's guides in to, to crochet their energy together. So they're all sort of floating together with the support of all their guides. What does it do? It creates a, a collective, a collective of everyone sharing space at that moment. And at that point, I become a little more relaxed, like my work is done. And, um, you know, just like when we practice energy healing or, you know, when I do prana shakti or when we're doing any of this work, who knows better, me or my logical brain? or our guides. So I open myself up and um, my students' guides, my guides come in and they channel through me. I'm still cohesive. I'm still there because I'm managing the energy, but the words I speak are flowing through me from those who know better what will help everyone. Now, of course, it helps that I've been doing this for like so long and I've done this so many times and I've taken people on so many journeys that I can relax and go through with it like I don't have to worry about um oh what do we do next out you know I've got the techniques down I'm comfortable in a lot of venues you know of course I've been going in and out of the Akashic library like literally my entire life I work there when I'm between lives. So this is a comfortable format for me. Because I'm comfortable, I can relax and let the guides come through. And again, the guides that come through are the ones that we have invited in that are already supporting us. So it's a very comfortable format. Um, and every stage of the journey that we go through, especially with an all day workshop, uh, what is it, this Sunday? Um, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. with a one-hour lunch break. Like, by the time we're done, people are going to be having crazy journeys because we're building up the energy, you know, platform every step of the way, and everyone is opening wider and higher with what can come through. You know, everyone will get comfort with that. This is a form of channeling. A lot of people tell me that they would like to channel, but they don't think they do because um, they think channeling is only like, you know, you leave your body, someone else comes in your body and speaks through you. And that's not true. Channeling is being a conduit for energy. Some people channel when they sing or when you're creating your craft, whatever it is. It might be cooking. It might be an artwork it might be making spreadsheets when the energy is flowing through you and you feel like 
it's not just you doing what you're doing, you're channeling. Um, you know, when you're doing energy healing, you're channeling. That's, that's what it is. You know, it's not, hopefully not your energy that you're putting out there. It's energy flowing through you to your clients. If you're using your energy when you energy heal, that might be why you're probably so tired and get headaches. So, you know, open up. Um, so when I channel, like I'll be doing on Sunday for the past life regression, the way I channel is always, always, I get my root chakra very deep and really wide to support all the energy that's coming through. And I connect my root chakra and the root chakras of everyone that's in the room. So we all have one broad collective base of support for what we're going to do. And then I open up my crown chakra and I open it high because I only want the best, most divine beings in there. So I take it up to the height of not just my higher self, but all the higher selves of everyone in the room. And I open up my crown chakra wide because I want it to envelop the crown chakras of everyone in the room. So I'm basically a basin and everyone's crown chakras are inside my crown chakra, which I can support because all of our root chakras have become like one beautifully entangled broad base. And then I double check my, our root chakras and spread them even wider because you always want to support the work you're doing. And there I am with this basin of crown chakra with everyone's crown chakras in it. And with that, and we connect them at the top. And with that support, we can take our, our collective crown chakras up a little higher. That means that whoever comes through will be those who are invited through of this very high frequency. You don't have to, like people like, oh no, what if a demon pops in? Like, no demon can get through that. We don't need to do any bubble of protection or anything because we are directly linked. It's like a closed, you know, tube. And only the most divine can come through with only the best support. And because we have all this great stuff coming in through us, whatever is left over, residual goes into Earth, which is like, you know, good for Earth. <laughs> So we do this great collective crown chakra thing and only the frequencies, you know, and we do put in there of our higher selves and our personal guides, our guardians, our mentors, those who love us from divine and care about our best, most joyous well-being in this moment. We're right here to share with us the lessons we need in the most supportive, loving manner are invited to come through and join us in space, in our space. So we do put in some protection, like, you know, like, you know what they say, vampires can't come in unless you invite them. We have said, you know, you're not invited. Um, so in this situation, I don't put any protective bubble because we're in a protective conduit. Um, but yeah, I know. <laughs> pretty awesome it radiates so much protective energy like so much is coming in and flowing through and radiating out that the space is really really like well cared for uh not just where we are but everywhere it radiates out to um so the other form of channeling what i'll be doing on saturday when gaia mary and mary come through me and I have a feeling they might bring a few special guest presenters, you know, like uh, wherever Mary and Mary are, you know, Jesus is probably hanging around and who knows, who knows who will come in for the opening act or, you know, add a little message here and there. Um, but in this situation, because I'll be the only one channeling and I don't need to contribute anything beyond, you know, the little preface at the start of it, which no one really cares about. They just want the big act. They don't care about, you know, me as the opening act. Uh, so we want to get to that, you know, as quickly as possible. Um, so, you know, we'll all sit and we'll do a little 
connective meditation to create sacred space and get all of us like cohesive and receptive and you know give the energy that's like the food for these beautiful divine ladies you know like they say pakamama loves energy and so it were chocolate <laughs> so um then i will get my root chakra again very deep very wide um but since i'll be the only one channeling it doesn't really matter what anyone else's is um i'll invite them to because it'll be good for them but for the purpose of the group and the class, it's important that everyone get connected so that uh, they can get messages from their guides while all of this is happening. But for the purpose of channeling, you know, I could be in the middle of Times Square with everyone ignoring me and all I have to do is get grounded, open up, and it will happen. The environment around me, once I get in this space, it makes no difference. Um, so, but of course, when we have that really good environment, like we will at Rising Phoenix this Saturday, it will be pretty amazing. Um, so anyway, I get my root deep and wide because a lot of energy is going to come through me. I mean, those of you know, like sometimes weird things happen to me physically when I channel, um, like that first time I channeled Jesus and I had like uh afterwards i had um what is it third degree burns all over my back running down my spine um so you know weird things can happen i get my crown up really high um i do meditation every day where i really work my energy centers and the grid and network you know of my chakras to um make sure I can be coherent at higher and higher or more and more powerful frequency. You know how like when you're on a guided meditation and then like you're with them, you're with them and then suddenly you don't know where you are and they're going off somewhere and then they like pick you up on the way back down and you're like, oh man, what did I miss? The point of really working my energy centers is to keep my a coherent state for greater and greater powers and frequencies. Um, oh my God, I can't even see where my hair is at. <laughs> I'm dyslexic, so I'm trying to like move a strand of hair while looking in the, uh, in the camera is like an exercise in futility for me. Um, so you're saying like, why do I need to be coherent when I'm channeling, I'm not even there? It's so that I can build a more and more powerful network that can hold more and more powerful energy. Like when I first started channeling, I was not channeling Gaia, Mary, and Mary. It took years of practicing and building my structure and the technique to be able to do that. Now, that, and then, you know, I'm not saying you guys can't. So like, who knows? One of you might say, well, I think I can do that. And you sit down and they'll come through right now. I don't know. I'm just saying for me, when I first started channeling, it was White Shell Woman. Um, and then later, White Buffalo Woman. And then the angel Azangel came in. And for a couple of years, they were like all I channeled. Uh, I had divine beings that I would chat with and they would work with me, but they wouldn't channel through me. And then um, White Buffalo Woman taught me how to work, and White Shell Woman, but more White Buffalo Woman um, taught me how to work the energy centers. White Shell Woman taught me other stuff. And that's when I started, like, then the librarians came through and then Gaia came through. I'm like, wow, talk about, like, a huge jump there. So um, that was like some years ago. Um, so I work my energy centers so I can get my crown chakra really, really high and really strong. If I want my crown chakra wide, then that will be if I want to capture like a, a breadth of, uh, of beings. Like what I say, well, I don't know who out there wants to speak through me, but we want to take it to this frequency and spread it wide with whoever is out there. So I'm going to do that. I need my root chakra to be 
really wide to support, you know, this. I don't, if I send it all the way to earth, but it's just like skinny, energetically I can topple over. So if I want to capture like, you know, ascended masters, demigods, whomever, I send it up really, really high, but for it to go up really high, it's got to be a strong structure. And again, with a solid base. I send it up really high, as high as I can go, while maintaining my awareness. And again, why I work the energy centers. And then I invite, like in my morning, every morning when I do meditation, I, I do this. And I invite whomever of this frequency, you know, everything I just said earlier, of my higher self, of my collective, of my self I was before I started incarnating as human, my spark self, of the ascended masters, of my guides, guardians, those who love me, you know, those who care about my well-being, those who have been teaching me, mentoring me through this life, all the lives previously, before I became human, whoever of that frequency or higher wishes to come and share space with me, I invite you to come and join within this vessel. So it doesn't have to be word for word on that. It's just like, you know, the intention. And honestly, I've been doing this for so long and I'm a little lazy. I, I'm like not a ceremony fan. Sometimes I'll like, I'll get into a meditative state and I'll open up and I'm like, okay, you guys know the drill. Hop on in. <laughs> and they'll laugh. Or I'll say, um, Okay, I am open to this frequency. Who's out there? Who am I connected to? Who wants to come and chat with me? And they'll come forward and we'll chat. Now, what do I mean by chat? Are they sitting here like this saying, hello, Bonita? And I'm like, hello, divine being. Sometimes I'll hear something in the back right lobe of my head, like um, right here. I'm with you, my child. Sometimes I hear someone chatting out there. Sometimes I see the network of who's there and I'll be like, who are you connected to? Who are you? We play a game of connecting me to everyone and everything in all existence. And that can take like, you know, I'm like, oh, damn, I just spent two hours in meditation again. Um, there, you know, there are different ways you can connect, but it all depends on what I'm receptive to at the moment. If I'm feeling tired, I'm not going to be receptive to that. Let's connect the data to everyone and everything game. I'm going to be more receptive to who wants to soothe me and boost me up. Uh, if I'm feeling uh, really vibrant, then some of the more subtle beings will be like, yeah, we'll catch her another time. So, you know, you have to like connect with who and oh, the phone is ringing. Uh, who and what and how you are able to connect and resonate in the moment and honor the process of the vessel. So when I'm channeling like this Saturday, when I'll channel Gaia, Mary and Mary, which I'm still like unbelievable that, that they've been working with me for like, I don't know, like six weeks now preparing me for this. So like for the people who will be there Saturday, this will be the event. But for me, this will be like what we've been rehearsing to and building to. And, I, you know, and then we'll see what goes beyond. Um, um, so for this, I will have to, um, I'll meditate all morning and then we'll be at Rising Phoenix in Manassas. And I'll chat with everyone. We'll do a little connection meditation to help with my base and also help me sort of calm down and get out of my head. It doesn't matter how many times I've channeled, just like it doesn't matter how many times I've spoon bent or levitated things. I still are like, oh, is it going to happen? I always have that like, ah, oh, don't let me down. And I'm like, oh, cool, it's Anita, you know? And then I hear voices saying, hey, don't worry. Like, you wouldn't even be here. So no one cares how you're feeling. Just scram out of your body and, you know, whatever. So, um, so I'm just saying, like, if you ever have, like, self-doubts or anything like that, don't worry. That's normal. Just, like, go on beyond it. 
Um, and so then I get myself very relaxed and I let the top of my head feel super light and tingly and airy. And I, I'm just like start focusing more on crown chakra than physical body. And I'm like, okay, whoever's out there, hop on in. Come on, come on. Don't let me down. Let's do this. And then it's almost like, like for any of you who do etheric surgery, it's a similar thing where I almost feel myself floating out of myself. Sometimes I'm like floating out of my back, almost like I end up like being wrapped around like I'm carrying myself piggyback style or like I become my own backpack. Or sometimes my essence becomes the tube, the conduit for someone else to come inside. Because maybe at that moment, I don't have enough trust that someone will come inside. So I don't want to vacate till I know 100% it's good. That's okay. Or sometimes I float a little bit off to my right side. Like, you know how um, when uh, you have a conversation with a non-physical being, a lot of times you hear them in your right ear? Well, I become the non-physical being who's hanging out outside of my right ear. Um, so it doesn't really matter what happens because, again, it's a unique formula every time. So um, I'm, I leave myself open to the possibility that this time I might stay in my body, this time I might be outside of my body. It may start with like one sense or another sense becoming stimulated. It may even be like when I channel a collective, they usually pull me in as one of the collective. So I'm not unconscious. I'm completely conscious. Like when I channel the Akashic, you know, collective, the librarians or, you know, any of that, um, I'm one with them in the collective, which is a super cool experience. Uh, with Mary Mary and Gaia, I'm not quite sure what will happen. Um, they usually sort of push me out to the side and then later pull me back a little bit on the perimeter. But when I first start speaking, like the first words are the hardest because I'm still kind of in my body. So they're trying to speak through the dense energy of me. And that's why when people channel, like usually the first like minute to five minutes or three minutes, you could feel like the energy is a little like, oh, yeah. But then the more the person channels, you know, me or anyone, you can feel the presence coming stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, so, you know, I'll try to record um, Saturday's channeling. Uh, my recordings lately have been a little squiffy, uh, but I'll try to record it and we'll see what messages they have. Uh, you guys are welcome to join us. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I just wanted to explain like channeling a being where they come in and fill in. And again, it's like, you need to have, you know, like maybe 10 years from now, when I go to channel, I can just like hop out and they hop in without any process. But for now, and I've been doing this a while, so, um, for now, I just like open up, give the invitation, and as they come pouring in, what happens to me varies from person or being or collective, depending on our energetic connection and what they want to do with me. Sometimes when I'm channeling, it feels like we're like in a movie theater, like me, whoever I'm channeling, and all the people I'm channeling to except the people I'm channeling to are in the auditorium watching the movie and I'm up in the projection booth watching the same movie, which is whatever is coming out of me. But they're showing me the vision behind what they're channeling, uh, you know, like the backstory. And whoever is doing the channeling is there chatting with me while we're running the movie. And then whoever is their posse, their friends, their support unit, is there also like having a little party and chat, you know, and chatting. And then we've got like a blooper reel going and we've got a behind the scenes reel going. 
So my experience is going to be different from the experience of the people I'm channeling for. But when I talk with people afterwards, um, it's interesting. The more you open up and the more you invite your guides to come share space with you while you're connecting with the channeling, Sometimes people will say things like uh, the, whoever I'm channeling was also coming and sharing space with them and talking with them independently of what I was saying or showing them. It's amazing. Like sometimes people see the exact same like projected images that I saw. So um, and they see it like a moment before I'm saying whatever I'm saying. So whatever I'm saying is just supporting the experience they're already having. Um, and that's like one of the main reasons like why I like to do a connection meditation before I channel so that everyone can have the opportunity to open up. Um, I would say this, if you're going to see me or anyone else who channels, um, it's a good idea to give yourself meditative time beforehand so that you can max out the experience potential while you're there. Um, was a longer message than I intended, <laughs> but I hope I gave you some helpful information on channeling a being versus channeling space. And remember, if you're doing energy healing, open yourself up to let the divine energy flow through you. When you're singing, you're welcome to open up and let divine beings sing with you and through you. You may sound the same. If you're me, you might sound a little off key, but the energy will be good. <laughs> so um, have a lovely day, everyone. And um, I did put links for this weekend's two workshops in case anyone's interested. Um, as you guys know, I'm kind of on a summer hiatus to work on my books um, and do a lot of hiking. I am doing one more workshop in July at Crystal Cognizance where um, uh, we're meeting all of our guides from people, if that's another all day thing. So we start with people who love you, who have passed on to like nature guides, animal spirit guides, elemental guides, on up to uh, your past lives that are here with you, to your whatever angels connecting with our guardian angels. On up to higher divine that'll be in July. Um, I want to, my guide said to me, if possible, people who attended this Sunday of connecting with all your past lives and then next month with all your guides, that would be like powerful. But, um, you know, they tell me to do something, I do it. Other than that, I'm then I'm going to be heading up to uh, Canada, New England to work with indigenous healers for a while. So um, that will help me get more in touch with what I need to bring back more to share with you all. So have a great day. Thank you so much. I adore you guys. And now I'm about to go do a, well, it's supposed to be a 12 mile hike. We'll see how far I get. <laughs> see you all later. Bye.